Hey everybody, it's Jasper here from B78 Coaching. Nice to see you again. Uh, happy to be joining you here at the Loft at Home. We've got a great workout plan for you today. Uh, it's gonna be a tough one. I'm actually a little bit nervous myself. Uh, but we're gonna have a lot of fun and uh, it'll be a good sweat. Hey everybody, so here we go, uh, nice and easy here for five minutes, okay? Really important to get the, the body warmed up. The older I get, the more I have to start very slowly in these workouts. Not sure uh, where everybody else is at, but uh, certainly, um, you know, it's, it's very good to, be, to ease into these things. You can't be too aggressive out of the gate. Really important that you bring that core body temperature up a little bit, give the muscles a little bit of time uh, to warm up. Don't force anything in the warm up. Just nice and chill, nice and easy. And gradually as the body gets warm, the muscles come around, they'll start spinning the pedals and it'll start feeling good. But the key is not to force it in the warm up. It's nice and easy, nice and easy. I find too, if my training load is very high and I'm maybe carrying a lot of fatigue, like if you're in a really structured training program, sometimes the warm up takes a little bit longer as well. If you're really rested, usually your body's like really ready to go. So depending on where you're at, take that into consideration. But given my training regime and my aging body, I like to start nice and slow. So nice and easy here. Start paying attention to how that pedal stroke feels. If you're feeling smooth or if you're feeling a little bit clunky, there's some real simple, simple cues that can make your pedal stroke nice and smooth. One is to feel like you're scraping mud off the bottom of your shoes. That's not a bad one. You want to try and be smooth around the pedal stroke. It doesn't mean that you want equal pressure around the pedal stroke. It just means that you want to be as smooth as you can. Certainly pay attention to whether you're bouncing up and down in the saddle. You don't want to be doing that. Just nice and smooth. So we're about halfway through this first part of the warm up here. So in a couple of minutes, we're gonna do a little activation set. I always think it's really important to put a little bit of stress on the body before you start the main set so that the body really gets warmed up. The first thing we're gonna do is a little uh, set of single leg work. If you watched my earlier video, we did some there as well. This is a great way to warm up all those little muscle groups that help you around the pedal stroke. It may get a little bit neglected if you're being lazy. So when we do single leg work, we take the other foot out of the pedals completely and we pedal with one leg. So we're gonna do three times, 30 seconds with our left leg, 30 seconds with our right leg. So that's the first little set. The second set, to get that core temperature up a little bit more, we're gonna do three times, 30 seconds standing, and then 30 seconds seated. And the last little set we're gonna do is three times, 30 seconds. I have it down at about 100 RPM. Certainly, uh, if you're more advanced, you can spin up a little bit higher. If you're maybe more in the beginning stages and you start to get a bit uncoordinated at high RPMs, maybe aim for 90, 95. Regardless, it should be an RPM or a cadence that challenges you a little bit, but that you can still keep it in control. So we're gonna do 30 seconds, a little bit faster RPM. I'm gonna aim for about 100, and then 30 seconds nice and easy. And then we'll go into another minute nice and easy before we start the main set. And I'll tell you all about that main set as we work our way through this activation piece here. But for now, just over 30 seconds until we start. So again, we're gonna start with 30 seconds left leg only. 
And then we're gonna go straight into 30 seconds, right leg only, okay? That's coming up here in 20 seconds. Let's get ready here in 10. We're going in five. And here we go. I like to put a little bit more resistance on when I start my single leg work because it slows the pedal stroke down a little bit. And I find that a little bit easier. Certainly, as I warm up a bit more, maybe get a bit more coordinated, you can spin that single leg a little bit quicker. But for now, I got it hanging around 75, 80 RPM. All right, let's get ready to switch it up here. Moving over to the right leg. I love this part of warm up too because it's a great way to practice getting in and out of the pedals. I don't know about you, but I certainly have uh, made the rookie error of not being able to get out of my pedals fast enough at a stop sign and I fall on my side. And that was a long time ago. But uh, I know lots of people that have done it. All right, let's get ready to switch here. Switch it up, number two. The ability to get in and out of your pedals quickly and kind of without thinking about it is really important. Equally as important as the ability to get into those pedals after. So if you're riding with a group, you don't get left behind. 10 seconds, and we'll switch it up again. Let's get ready here and back to the right leg. Number two on the right leg here. Yeah, with single leg, you really wanna try and make it as smooth as you can. So if you have any dead spots, or spots where it's getting a bit clunky, really kinda use your brain and figure out how can I smooth that out. That's the goal. Five seconds, and we'll get into round three. Here we go. Last one on the left leg here. Such a great way to warm up all the little muscles that can help you around the pedal stroke. Let's get ready to switch here in five. And switch it up. Last one, and then we're gonna clip in right after this, and go right into 30 seconds standing. With the standing, same thing as the single leg. I actually like to dial the resistance up just a little bit. Uh, it can get quite awkward if the resistance is too low and you're trying to stand. Let's get ready here in five. And here we go, clip in. A little bit of resistance, and I'm just gonna come out of the saddle. Again, we're still part of the warm up here. This does not have to be hard. We're just getting that core temperature to come up a little bit. And standing certainly helps with that. Five seconds. And take a seat. Nice and easy, pedaling in between. Whew, I can already feel my heart rate coming up there. That's perfect. That's exactly what we want. All right, getting ready for number two here in 10 seconds. In five. Ready, and here we go. Number two, find a good rhythm when you're up here. You want to dance from side to side. Some people find it a little bit awkward when they stand on a stationary bike because the bike doesn't move underneath you. Your body kind of moves over the bike, which is actually the opposite of what happens on the road. Just remember that. 
and take a seat. On the stationary bike or uh, trainer, just remember that the feeling outside when you stand is quite different. The bike will want to move underneath you outside and that's not a bad thing. It's supposed to, just a little bit. All right, five seconds. And into our last one here. Here we go. After this one, we're gonna sit easy for 30 seconds. And then we get into our higher RPM set. Again, all part of the warm up. Five seconds. And good. Nice and easy here. Again, don't force anything in the warm up. Let your body come into it gradually. It'll get there. All right, 10 seconds. We're gonna go three by 30 seconds at 100 RPM or thereabouts. 30 seconds easy. And here we go. 30 seconds. Bring up the RPM. Consider my 100 RPM suggestion a loose guideline, not an absolute must. You may also find, as you get warmed up, it gets a little bit easier to inch your way up. And nice and easy. Okay, so as we roll through this little set, I'm gonna explain the main set to you. The main set today is five rounds of four minutes of work and one minute rest. So just keep that in mind. We're gonna do this high RPM thing here and then I'll keep explaining it. Ready? And here we go. 30 seconds. Let's get it up there. Should be at least as high as that first one. I know I usually find a little bit more range as I get warmed up. Five seconds. And nice and easy. Okay, back to the main set. Five rounds, four minutes of work, one minute rest. Now, it doesn't sound like a lot of rest, I know. But in that four minute block, we're gonna do three minutes at your FTP. That's your functional threshold power. That is an intensity that you should be able to hold for about an hour. So it's not super hard, at least for three minutes. Let's go here, last round. Bring that RPM up here for 30 seconds. I'm starting to see 103, 105. My body's getting nice and warm. It's feeling ready for this main set. And good. Nice and easy here. Okay. We got a minute and a half here till the main set starts. You should be sweating. I definitely am sweating. So, five times, four minutes on. In that four minute block, three of those minutes are at your FTP. Functional threshold power, or about 85%. 80 to 85% if you're going on perceived effort. So this is an effort that you should be able to sustain for an hour. So for three minutes, not a big deal. But then the last minute of that little set, so the fourth minute, we are going to go to about 110% of your FTP. So let's say, you know, about 95%, 90, 95% of your perceived effort, maybe closer to 90. 
Regardless, it needs to be higher. It needs to be an unsustainable pace, okay? So again, five rounds, four minutes. In that four minute block, three minutes at FTP, one minute harder, and then one minute easy. So not much rest, and then we dive right back in again. This is such a good set to work on your mental toughness and get you ready. All right, are we ready here? And here we go. Three minutes here at your FTP or about 85%. So this should be strong and steady, but not unsustainable. This should be something you can settle into and hang on. If you are talking comfortably with somebody right now, you're not going hard enough. You should be right at that level where you can't really carry on a conversation. I am struggling right now to talk to you. Not that much. A little bit. <laughs> That's one minute down. Very good, very good. If you're thinking what RPM or cadence should I be holding, well, honestly, there's no right answer. It's a sliding scale. It depends on how coordinated you are, how much experience you have on the bike. But you do want to kind of hang out probably in about that 85 to 100 range. Now that's a big range, but some people may feel comfortable down in the mid to high 80s. Other people need to spin it up a bit. Typically, as you gain more experience on a bike, you're kind of going the upward direction and part of that is just efficiency, coordination. So don't stress. But you do want to try and hone in on an RPM and really fight for it. If you're using wattage, then you want to be right about that FTP, functional threshold power. And if not, then hang out around 80 to 85 percent on the perceived effort scale. Okay, so we got about 30 seconds to go here. And then the last minute of this four minute block needs to be harder. If you're using power and you know your numbers, the same for around 110 percent of your FTP. If you don't have power, no problem. Let's aim about 85, 90% perceived effort. We're gonna go here in five. Ready, and here we go. This is not a sprint. It should be hard and definitely unsustainable for longer than a few minutes, but we are not sprinting here. Thirty seconds to go. Let's go, let's go. Fifteen seconds. Right to the finish here, five seconds. Awesome. Good. Nice and easy. So, I mean, not a lot of rest here. And the reason for that is because the intensity really is not that high. Three minutes at your FTP shouldn't be a huge deal. A minute at 110%, yeah. That's a bit bigger of a deal. But the goal here is that we keep going back to that FTP with a little bit more fatigue in our legs. We 
accumulating some lactic acid in that one minute bit. And now you have to fight a little bit harder for that three minute section. We're gonna go here in 20 seconds. That's round one done. Good job, everybody. 10 seconds to go here. All right, we're gonna go in five. This is number two of five. Ready, and here we go. All right, let's settle in here. If you're using a trainer that can dial into wattage right away, get yourself right to that FTP wattage and hang out there. If you have wattage but you don't know your FTP, well, maybe go back to the place you were before on the first rep and micro adjust it a bit. Was it too easy? You know, maybe, maybe add about five or 10 watts. Was it too hard? Maybe you bring it back a little bit. You wanna find that sweet spot. Settle in here, find a rhythm. That's a minute down. Very good, very good. smooth as you can through this entire set. We're coming up on halfway here of our workload for this interval. There we go. That means in one minute, we gotta dial in and go a little bit harder. But for now, just keep it where it is. get your head in the game here. 10 seconds and then we ramp up a little bit harder. We're going in three, two, one and here we go. Last minute here. Let's get stuck in. seconds to go. Keep fighting for it here. If you're on wattage, then stick to the wattage that you've committed to here. Come on. Final stretch here. 10 seconds. Five seconds. And good. Nice job. So important to keep the legs moving, hey? Do not stop. Do not stop. When we clear lactic acid from our system, we actually do a better job clearing that when we're in motion. Everybody will have an optimal wattage that they clear lactic acid at. 
I can't give you a number because it's different for everybody. But what I can tell you is that it is not just stopping. You need to keep the legs moving. All right, round three, who's ready? We're going in here in about 10 seconds. Let's keep committing here as we get deeper into this set. Five seconds. Ready. Here we go. Three minutes at your FTP or about 85%. 80, 85%. Something you could hold for close to an hour if you had to. It would be an awful hour. It would be an awful hour, but you could do it. I don't know about you, but I certainly find the deeper I get into these sets, mentally, I really dial in to the effort that I'm trying to do. It almost gets a bit easier, harder at the same time, but kind of easier up here because I'm stuck into it. I also find I have a bit more room with my cadence, my RPM, it kind of creeps up a little bit. And I think that's because my body just really finds a good rhythm. One thing that's really, really important as we get deeper into these sets is you start to pay attention to where you're holding tension. I know for me sometimes I get a little tight in the shoulders. Maybe I start gripping the bars a little too hard. It's a waste of your time, waste of your energy. You need to drive all that energy into your legs. So relax everything else. Just relax as much as you can and really focus on driving all that energy into the muscles that are actually doing the job. If you watch the best time trialists in the world, they are incredibly disciplined with their position. They just hold the most beautiful position and they don't really move. That takes a lot of practice. That's something you can practice in sets like this. You find you're moving around, getting sloppy. You don't want that. Okay, coming up to our last minute here. You know what that means. We're gonna drive up the effort again. 110% of your FTP, about 85, 90% received effort in five, Ready, here we go, let's go, come on now. Focus here, but remember, keep everything that isn't working as relaxed as possible. Don't look at my face, usually, Holds more tension than it needs to. 30 seconds. Come on now, 15 seconds. 10 seconds. Five seconds. Come on. That's good. Keep your legs moving. Now I know, I know as we get into this set deeper, it gets harder. And that minute of rest is not feeling like much. But that's kind of the point of this set. So you got two choices. One, you give in and mope about it. Or, you suck it up, 
when we get this done together, that's why you're here on a video, doing it with other people, this makes you accountable. So let's do this. Come on. All right. Let's go here in 10 seconds. We got two more left. It's 10 minutes out of your life. It's nothing. Come on, five seconds. Ready, and here we go. So here's a little hint for you. A lot of times the second last rep is really tough for people because it's not the last rep. It's still got one more to go, but you're really starting to suffer. So if you know that, if you know that's the trend, then don't follow the trend. Get stuck into that second last one. The last one's easy. It's the last one. The second last one. That's when mentally you gotta check in. Another little technical tip. When I'm riding on a stationary trainer, I try not to look down. I find myself doing it a lot. This is easier. But if I go back to the road and I'm looking down, that's not good. So I try and keep my head up, similar to how I would if I was out on the road. It's safer to look up on the road. Keep going here. Oh, I'm looking down again. Let's go here, keep going. Got less than 90 seconds until we shift gears and do our hard minute. Keep going here, come on. One minute until we shift gears. Let's go here. Fight for it here. seconds until we change gears here. And by change gears I mean increase the effort. You may not need to actually change gears. Five seconds. All right. And here we go. Last minute here. Bring up the resistance a bit if you need to. And let's get stuck in here. Come on, hang in there. 30 seconds to go. Don't quit, let's go. Come on. 20 seconds left. your legs spinning. It's tempting to stop. It's the worst thing you can do. Keep your legs moving. Last set here. Hey, okay. Last one. You guys have done such a good job getting to here. This is where you get all the benefit of a set like this. 
when you're tired and it's mentally getting tougher and you still commit. You have to commit. You're either all in or get off your bike. I've never said that before. That's not like a thing I say. I just said it now. I mean it. 10 seconds. All together here. Let's do a really good job. Five seconds. Ready. Here we go. Last one. We're not looking for heroics here. You don't need to be like 10% higher than you were on the first four. You just want to settle in again and fight for that FTP wattage or about 80, 85% perceived effort for the first three minutes and then we increase it. Keep it as smooth as you can. Pay attention to where you're holding tension. Get rid of it wherever it does not need to be. So good, so good. We're coming up on a minute here. We're a minute in. Three to go. You got this, come on. All together. Even if you're alone in your living room, or wherever you are, you're accountable to everybody else who's doing this video. So don't let everybody down, especially yourself. Keep going. Here we go. Way. That's two minutes in. Final stretch here. One minute until we bring the intensity up for our final minute of this main set here. You find yourself starting to lose control a bit. Think of one or two technical things that keep you on task. Keep you present. Smooth pedal stroke. Keep the head up. Relax the shoulders and hands, whatever it is. Whatever keeps you engaged. Ten seconds until we shift gears for our last minute. Five seconds. And here we go. Last minute, up to 110% FTP. 85, 90% perceived effort. Come on, all together. Keep going here, come on. 30 seconds to go. Come on. Right to the finish. Don't stop. 20 to go. Ten to go. Come on. Right to the top. Here we go. Finish it off. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, well done. So good. Keep your legs moving. I know it's tempting to stop, but it's the worst thing you can do. You will recover more quickly if you keep your legs moving. Excellent job, everybody. Excellent job. That was a tough one. 
I can tell you, after number four, even I was wishing I only programmed four. <laughs> but now after five, I'm stoked we did five. Really, really great, everybody. Keep your legs moving. So we got another five minutes here. Another five minutes, nice and easy. I would recommend, you know, hanging out for a bit longer if you got the time. Five minutes is good. You know, you'll, you'll spin the legs out nicely. Clear out most of that lactic acid for sure. But if you do have a bit more time, it's not gonna hurt you to stay on for five or 10 more. You don't have to zip off somewhere. When we cool down, if you want a perceived effort to go by, you know, probably something in the 50 to 55% of your FTP, maybe even up to 60% of your FTP is totally fine. Perceived effort scale about the same. So it shouldn't be nothing. You shouldn't just be having no tension on the pedals. You do want to have some resistance but it definitely does not need to be too hard. You should easily be able to talk with friends or other people. If you're by yourself, you should be able to sing. If you'd like to sing, I never have. And maybe you might want to. Great job, everybody. So we're coming up on three minutes left here in the cool down. Really important after a workout like this, especially if you're indoors, maybe you're sweating a lot, if it's warm, you know, really make sure you replace some of the fluids that you lost. An electrolyte drink is never a bad idea. Typically indoors, the heat stress is quite a bit higher because we don't really have air moving over us unless you have a fan. Which isn't necessarily a bad thing. That heat stress is also a great training stimulus. The heat will make you stronger, but you certainly need to be mindful of the fluid loss, electrolyte loss, especially if you're hoping to do another great workout the next day, or maybe later that day. You want to make sure nutritionally you're doing the right things after a session like that. we got two minutes to go here. Awesome job. I definitely really encourage you to stay on for this full five minutes. The cool down here is really important. Don't just hop off your bike. Give it at least this five minute piece. And if you have longer, by all means, go for it. Got just over a minute left. I hope you all enjoyed that session. I know I did. I've been spending lots of time on my mountain bike and uh, great workout the mountain bike but very different. Not as much sustained effort as what we just did today. So that was a good little wake-up call for me and a reminder that to be good on the bike especially a road bike, you need some real sustained efforts. Just like that. All right, we got 30 seconds. 
your heart rate definitely should be way down from the completion of that last interval. And you should be feeling pretty chill. We're gonna wrap this up in 10 seconds here. Thanks so much for coming. Thanks for joining me. I know I always do better when I'm accountable to other people. It was great uh, doing a session with you. We'll see you next time.